first let me tell you about her husband. He is fabulous. Why should she have any other love object besides him? We don't know. But she does. And his name is Liam Neeson. <laughs> so she shares this with me. And then a few weeks later, she calls me and says, um, Liam Neeson is going to be on Broadway, sister. We have to go. And my mother wants to go, too. So we all pile in the car. And off we go to see Liam Neeson. And I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the play. But it was fabulous. Now, Liam Neeson, um, OK, so she bought these tickets. And it was a last minute thing. And the woman said, there's only three tickets left. And she's like, perfect, we need three tickets. She didn't even look what aisle they were in or where they were. So we get to the theater. And the person who's taking us to our seats starts to walk down the aisle. And we're getting closer to the stage and closer to the stage. And all of a sudden, we realize we're in the front row. Oh, my girlfriend is like melting. She's like, I can't believe this. We're going to be right there. And sure enough, here comes Liam Neeson. He's the star of the show, so he comes right up to the front. We can hear the floorboards cracking. I can polish his shoes. I can see his fabulous eyelashes. She's melting in the next chair, of course. And it's a wonderful performance. She's so happy. But now, she says, that's not enough. I have to wait by the stage door. I don't care how long it takes. I must see him again in a more casual way. <laughs> so barricades are set up. She waits by the door. The guy comes, her, his assistant comes out and says, I'm sorry, he needs to take a nap for the next show, so he won't be coming out. Well, she says, we'll have to just come back. We'll have to stay till the evening. So we go to the Empire State Building. We climb to the top. Oh, it's very lovely. We come back down. And about an hour later, we're standing at the barricades once again. And all of a sudden, they start coming out. Every Welsh actor coming to support Liam Neeson. Yes, there's Pierce Brosnan. There's Anthony Hopkins. All fabulous love objects, remember? And we're just looking at them. And finally, here he comes. He came out. And right as he walked by her, she went, Mr. Neeson, how was your birthday? And he looked right at her and came right up to her. And they had like a little casual conversation. No one could hear it was set being said. But he was so nice to her. Pictures were taken. Now she's so thrilled. But that's not enough. She wanted to go to Sardi's, which is right across the street. So we go across the street. Now, I have a love object. Well, let me save that till the end. So her mother has to go to the ladies' room. It's on the second floor. And while we're up there, we learn that in between, at intermission, it's like a well-known fact that people come over, the best-known people, and they go up to the second floor to have cocktails. So we're like, right on, let's get a cocktail. We belly up to the bar, and all of a sudden, there's someone like pushing against me. And just as I was about to object, <laughs> I turned around like, who is this obnoxious person? Because he was really like, it was almost like obscene. And uh, I turn around, and it's Sean Connery, the Sean Connery, James Bond. Well, I always thought he was pretty cool. And he was like my love object if my fabulous husband wouldn't be around. So anyway, I turn around to like say, hey, could you like cut it out? And it's him. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And then her mother comes out at the same time out of the ladies' room and turns into a 16-year-old girl. She's like, her legs are buckling, and she starts to faint. We catch her. And that was her love object. And we didn't object to Sean Connery bumping into us obscenely. And that's the end of the story.